A 72-year-old female patient complained of a loose lower denture that was painful to wear and chew with. A routine examination revealed a pronounced lack of bone volume in the lower ridge in conjunction with a relatively high floor of the mouth, making relines ineffective in resolving the patient's chief complaint. After a comprehensive examination, including cone beam computed tomography imaging and an in-depth consultation with the patient, her family, and her physician, the decision was made to proceed with a screw-retained provisional fixed denture supported by four implants. The final restoration would be delivered after the implants were fully integrated. The provisional restoration was designed based on the patient's existing approved aesthetics, occlusion, and vertical dimension of occlusion. The restorative protocol for this case used state-of-the-art techniques to improve the accuracy of the implant placement, optimize the function and aesthetics of the provisional, and reduce the time required for treatment. The diagnosis, treatment planning, surgery, provisional denture, and final restorative steps of her treatment plan all leverage digital dentistry technologies. The convergence of these technologies is enabling simpler, more convenient, and more affordable restorative protocols. Her periodontal tissues were generally healthy and free from irritation or bleeding because of recent reline and adjustment of the lower denture to relieve sore spots. Her occlusion with the relined dentures was good, and she had been functioning in these dentures for years without any TMJ issues. The objective of the treatment plan was to improve patient comfort and chewing function by replacing her existing mandibular denture with a screw-retained fixed implant bridge. With sufficient primary stability, the patient could receive a fixed provisional at the time of surgery, providing a stable lower denture. The provisional denture would be designed in dental CAD using the setup from the existing denture. The final restoration would also be produced digitally, beginning with the CAD-CAM provisional design and incorporating any adjustments made to the provisional post-surgery. Because the occlusion, aesthetics, and VDO of the patient's existing denture were correct, it was modified to serve as the CBCT scan appliance. Prior to her imaging appointment, we placed six fiduciary markers in the lingual flanges of her lower denture. The indentations were made with a number six round burr to one half depth with spacing approximated equally around the flange. The indentations were then filled with warm gutta percha and the excess was polished off using a rubber wheel. The imaging center then scanned the patient with the marked denture in place. To ensure maximum accuracy of the surgical guide, it was important to take an accurate scan of the denture following the dual scan protocol, including the intaglio surface and the fiduciary markers. We scanned the lower denture, maxillary denture, and the bite with the Newtom CBCT scanner. From these DICOM datasets, we extracted stereolithography files that described the surface geometry of the scanned objects. The bite was used to articulate the scans of the lower denture scan appliance and the maxillary denture. Then the CBCT DICOM anatomical data was carefully registered to the STL files of the scan appliance. Once the data sets were accurately merged in the treatment planning software, we virtually selected and placed the implants at optimal positions and angulations for the available bone volume and prosthesis support. The two posterior implants were angled to fit within the greatest volume of bone and increase the anterior-posterior spread of the restoration support. Multi-unit abutments were used to correct the angle of the two posterior implants and to provide a common restorative platform across all implant sites. The provisional prosthesis and surgical guide were designed using the occlusal and intaglio surface data from the scan appliance. After segmenting the DICOM data for density, Models of the patient's mandibular arch, provisional denture, and surgical guide were 3D printed and then articulated so the entire surgical and prosthetic stack could be examined. The provisional was designed with relief for the multi-unit temporary cylinders. The surgical guide incorporated occlusal anatomy to function with the bite index for anatomically correct fixation of the guide. A surgical bite index was constructed for precise placement of the surgical guide at the time of surgery. The surgical index proved reliable in accurately positioning the guide for surgery. After administering mandibular anesthesia, the surgical guide was placed with the aid of the index, and the fixation pins were installed to hold the guide firmly in place to begin the surgery. After using a gingival tissue punch, the guide was removed to facilitate removal of the tissue at the implant sites. The index was again used to position the guide following tissue removal 
and the fixation pins realigned to their holes without incident. The surgical guide was used to prepare the osteotomies and guide the placement of the 4.7 millimeter implants. Primary stability of all four implants was acceptable and the multi-unit abutments were mounted on top of the implants. The temporary prosthesis was held in place with a looting index and cold cure acrylic was used to fix the prosthesis to the multi-unit temporary cylinders. After curing, the prosthesis was removed and finished extraorally before attaching it to the multi-unit abutments. Minimal occlusal adjustments were made immediately after delivery of the provisional prosthesis. Because the patient was still under anesthesia, obtaining an accurate, repeatable centric occlusion was challenging. The patient's bite was adjusted during a routine postoperative check a few days later, and by the third visit, her bite was comfortable and stable. The provisional was designed to remain out of contact with the peri-implant tissue, allowing for cleansing. It also did not cantilever past the distal most implant. This abbreviated design reduced the forces transmitted to the implants, even though the patient's provisional prosthesis was opposed by a full upper denture. She was instructed to maintain a soft diet for the first three months. The implants were allowed to integrate for six months. The patient had a very stable bite and was free of TMJ symptoms throughout the entire healing phase. The final restoration protocol made use of intraoral scanning, dental CAD CAM, and 3D printing to deliver the final prosthesis in just three appointments. Digital impressions were taken with an intraoral scanner at the first appointment. The second appointment was for try-in of the combined denture setup and milled titanium bar. The definitive prosthesis was delivered at the final appointment. The aesthetics, occlusion, and video of the patient's provisional prosthesis were correct, so it was used to guide the design of the final restoration. First, a scan was taken of the provisional in the mouth, taking care to capture adjacent anatomical landmarks. Next, the opposing dentition was scanned. Because a denture served as the opposing dentition, we scanned it extraorally. The patient was then asked to close and the bite was scanned in maximum intercuspation. Next, we remove the provisional, attach scanning fixtures to the multi-unit abutments, and scan the restorative arch, taking care to capture the same adjacent anatomical landmarks as the first scan of the provisional. After intraoral scanning of the edentulous arch was complete, the provisional denture was reattached to the multi-unit abutments. The laboratory technicians used the scan data to design the final prosthesis. The denture and the milled titanium bar were designed together in dental CAD using the scans of the provisional prosthesis and opposing denture as design guides. The intersecting volume of the milled bar was then subtracted from the bottom of the denture to complete the design. After design, a 3D model of the final denture was printed and the titanium bar was milled. The denture and the bar were mated together and the denture mold was made from the assembly. After removing the printed denture model from the mold, denture teeth were inserted into the mold and then affixed to the milled bar with wax. An appointment was made for try-in of the denture setup. After removing the provisional prosthesis, the denture setup was placed with one screw tightened on the milled bar and radiographs were taken to verify passive fit of the substructure. The denture setup was checked for proper fit and a small adjustment was made. Then the provisional was reinstalled and the verified denture setup was sent back to the lab. The lab processed the denture to the titanium bar with acrylic and the final prosthesis was finished. The provisional was removed and the final fixed implant denture was delivered. The patient was extremely happy with the fit, comfort, and function of the final prosthesis. Advances in intraoral scanning and dental CAD CAM technology are enabling new treatment protocols that shorten treatment times and improve prosthetic outcomes. Adequate primary stability is a must before proceeding with an implant retained provisional or final prosthesis. Had sufficient primary stability not been achieved for all of the implants upon surgical placement, the patient's existing denture could have been used as a provisional after relieving it to accommodate healing abutments or cover screws and sutures. Patient comfort was a primary consideration in the decision to construct a new provisional denture instead of modifying the existing denture, which lacked retention and would have posed problems if placed on a new surgical site. 
Guided surgery and dental CAD CAM are complementary technologies that can make the surgical and restorative phases of implant therapy more efficient and predictable. Guided surgery offers extremely accurate implant placement relative to the treatment plan. Because we can predict the implant position post-surgically, prosthesis design can be done pre-surgically. Advanced treatment protocols that leverage digital impressions, treatment planning, guided surgery, and dental CAD CAM are transforming implant therapy. As the technologies behind implant digital dentistry continue to evolve and converge, we can expect further reductions in the time required to restore implant cases and more consistent results.